In this Dragonfly 3 training video, we're going to look at the Annotate Control Panel. The Annotate Panel is usually found on the main tab. I'm going to expand it and I'm going to undock it by dragging it away so we can focus on it. The data set we're looking at today is a micro CT scan of the Zeiss Dual Energy Phantom performed on a Zeiss X Radia Versa. I'll start by looking at the point set annotation. Once enabled by clicking, I can now click in my image and position different point coordinates. If we come over here and we select another data, another object and then select the point set, you can see the individual coordinate positions of the different points. Not only do you see their position in the world coordinate system, but you also see the intensity for the images in my workspace and you see for those images what the nearest lattice coordinate position is. So there's a lot of information associated with each of those points. If you're interested in a particular point, you can also give it a caption. So I could double click here and call it my grain. When I double clicked, you may have noticed that that object was then centered. So if I double click here, this object now becomes centered. It's also the behavior that if I'm on another slice and I double click, it will become centered again. So that shows you some of the behavior of the point set annotation. What I will do now is I will switch to the ruler annotation. The ruler annotation allows me to drag from one end of an object to another end in order to get a length. I can also drag across an area. If you look over here, you see all of the point sets and rulers I have created. And if I click on a particular object like ruler number three, you see that it is highlighted. I can change its thickness by typing a value in here or using the mouse wheel to increase its on-screen thickness. You can also see the report of its length. If I choose ruler number four and then click on the profile intensity, you can now see the intensity profile as it passes through images that are in my coordinate system. So in my particular scene in this coordinate system, I only have one data set. And so you see the intensity along the path of the ruler as it passes through grains, through the epoxy, back through lower density grains, etc. The next tool is the angles tool, which allows me to drag the mouse from one point to another point, and then I release the mouse and then drag to form the second end of the angle. The angle is reported over here. You can also use the split angle tool. For example, if I want to measure an angle that is not subtended by a sharp vertex. So for example, if I wanted to know the angle subtended by this surface of the grain and this surface of the grain, I could in fact drag to right here. Then from here, I can now click inside this vertex, drag to my next position, and then from here, drag this way. This, if I zoom in, you can see now gives me the angle of this face with this face. It gives you the split angle behavior. The next tool I'll look at is the path tool. The path tool allows you to trace an arbitrary path through a data set which might be useful if you're trying to measure a path length, which is reported over here. You can also choose to smooth the path or to reduce the number of control points and resample the path. The last four tools are all region tools. They allow you to draw rectangles or ellipses or polygons. I'm now clicking multiple points or they allow you to do a freehand, which gives you a closed contour. Now I'll do something else here. I'll take this scene and I'll adjust the pitch. So now I'm on a different angle and I will draw a rectangle here. You'll see why in a moment. For any of these region tools, I can always select them and I can see the perimeter of the region as well as the area inside the region, or I can ask for a histogram of the channels inside that region. So again, I only have one image data channel loaded and here it's showing me the histogram inside that. If I wanted to edit this channel, edit this region, I can make it a smaller rectangle and now this histogram is updated. What I will do now is I will hit escape to go back to track mode. I will right click and choose 3D and in 3D you can see that my objects actually show up in the 3D scene. So that last oblique plane that I visualized and then dragged this region on, you see how it's an oblique plane. Again, if I scroll up and I select that final region, I can use the mouse wheel to increase the thickness and you can see it plotted in 3D. 
So the behavior of the annotate tools allows you to create point clouds which can store coordinate positions, rulers which have two endpoints that can be used for measuring distances or computing line profiles, angles and split angles for measuring the angle subtended by two surfaces, the path tool which allows you to trace a curvilinear path, and then the four region tools which allow you to draw a closed contour for which you can interrogate the perimeter, the area, or the interior histogram. So that concludes this discussion of the annotate panel. Thank you.